Hello everyone, Arxy here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia for another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. Now you've just been along for a ride while we have had Auto Drive doing a delivery to multiple cow pastures, cow, cow barns at the same time. We went to field 125 the first time, emptied out about 10,000 litres of TMR and then headed on down to the cows at field 203 and well they took the rest. So we could only do those two points but I can... I can confirm that we have already tested it out once and managed to get to all three cow pastures and have TMR delivered. So that was awesome. I'm pleased to have got that working. I don't know what happened in the last episode for it to uh, not deliver down to field 203, but it's worked this time with me. It's worked twice, so I'm feeling a little bit more confident. So that is fantastic, fantastic to have that all up and running. The uh, John Deere is over delivering some TMR over to field 170 as well, which is the one right over where our alfalfa field is. Now we are, as I said last time, we're getting pretty low on hay, not much alfalfa hay left there. Uh, we're starting to get through our silage bales, we'll just come around and have a look in here. Still a few sitting in the barn, but uh, they're not going to last too much longer. But fortunately, head down here and have a look at our silage. Bring up our menu, that's showing up as 80% fermented, so probably by the end of today, before we move into August, this will be fully fermented. So we've certainly got enough solid bales sitting over there to cover this off and uh, keep that lasting. We are getting low on maize silage as well though, so we're going to be hoping to get over into the cornfields and get some of that harvested and chopped up for silage sometime very, very soon. Now, the other task we are going to have to do today, we are going to jump into the MAC and run down to the cow pastures. We've got quite a bit of milk to sell again, so we'll just take a look there. So another 92,000 litres of milk already produced, uh, value of $62,000 selling it today at Chilliwack Dairy. So again, it's just ticking us over really, this milk is really becoming the lifeblood of the farm. Taking a look at the animals as well, everyone's good and healthy, I think, uh, there we go, they're full, they're almost full of food, they're definitely full of food, and the Anguses are almost full, so we're pretty much all under control. We are getting closer to getting some... Uh, some offspring there, 60% on our reproduction on that herd of Holsteins. Uh, so everything's just ticking over very, very nicely. Now in terms of other things here, our oats are still growing. They're only one cycle away from being ready to harvest. So I think if we uh, skip forward into August, they will be good to go. The cornfield here, 135, and then over here at 195 as well. They're still growing. Of course, being used for maize, for silage, we can actually cut that when it's still green. So maybe one more growth stage. And that will just about be ready to do. So lots of work coming up here very, very soon. But for today, we actually don't have a huge amount of things to do. Everything's just uh, just ticking along. But I'm starting to wonder. We've got a good amount of money in the account. I know we have to repay some of that. Uh, and I do want to repay some of that debt. But I'm starting to wonder whether we are almost at the stage to build the, uh, build the feedlot and get that all started and set up out the back here. So we'll have a think about that. Uh, we're going to jump into the Mac for now. We're going to head on off and get some milk sold. And once we've done that, maybe we'll make a decision. So just as we hop into here and we're going to go for a drive down to the two cow pastures to get the milk loaded up, uh, it is possible to use something like this, uh, something like the auto drive setup we had with the multiple delivery points, to actually go through multiple fill points and deliver. So we could conceivably set up an auto drive route which runs around the three, four, cattle pastures and loads up with milk and delivers that off to the sell points. Now added complication with this is obviously we have a reverse requirement to get in with the trailer to load up with the milk. It's not as user friendly as some of the other cow barns or just the position of the fill trigger is and with the capacity to take 60,000 litres or more in the truck I don't think we're going to worry about it too much uh, but if we had a smaller truck or trailer and we're having to regularly haul milk from uh, the cow farm down to the sell points then that would certainly be something we would give some consideration to but uh, for now we're just going to do this manually and go and get it all sold so we'll get pulled in here we will get loaded up and head on down to the dairy then we'll go down to the other uh, Holstein Frisian uh, mob of animals which is down at field 203 and we'll go and get that one all loaded up and get the milk out of there as well well this is interesting, we've come down to the Chilliwack Dairy to sell our milk. We've sold 40,000 litres, but for whatever reason, it just suddenly stopped letting me sell anymore. I can't unload it. I'm not sure what exactly is going on with that. With that open, pops up with the trigger, but won't allow us to sell anymore. Perhaps we've reached capacity or something. Not that I was aware there was a capacity. Maybe because it is a, uh, it is a production point as well. 
maybe that is why we've filled it up with potential milk that the production point can take. So we'll go down and try the uh, try the sell point at the Costco. I'm not sure if there's much difference in the prices at the moment. We're only just down the road. So we'll go and give that a try. If we can make sure we can get the rest of the milk sold. But I'm assuming it's because the, the dairy is a production point and it's reached its maximum capacity in there, which would be a little bit of a shame, a little bit unfortunate if that is the case. Now if anyone's got a suggestion on what we could do to solve that, other than buying the dairy, which we could do, maybe we uh, diversify in our cattle farm. But uh, for now, we're just going to go and make use of the Costco. There we are, able to get the remainder of it sold down here. So four and a half thousand dollars, and I think we got 26,000 off the first load. As for price difference, it was about $40 per litre difference. So not a huge variation, but uh, it's a variation all the same. And you can see there we've still got 46,000 litres down at the other uh, dairy that we will go and pick up now and go and get sold. And $32,000 for the rest of the milk. So another 60 or so thousand dollars there into the bank account. $789,000 overall. So that is going to be a big help on the farm. Like I said, it's the lifeblood. Right. Let's get on back over to the yard and uh, we'll have a little bit of a chat about the feedlot because I think that is what we're going to tackle next. So we're looking at the site of our future feedlot and I've got a few decisions to make. Now my intention had been to use Schultz Modding feedlot. It's a thousand head per, uh, per feedlot that you can put down. It's a buildable one so you place the feedlot and then you can build your fences and everything around it. Now that to me seems like the most appropriate one to use, uh, but whether a thousand head per pen is accurate or not, I think it's probably a little bit excessive for what we're trying to do. And certainly I don't want to have to be trying to feed a thousand head of cattle or even more because of the size of it. Uh, the other option we have is Lazy E Modding's feedlot, which is a little bit bigger, uh, but we're just going to take a look at the two of them and make a bit of a decision. So taking a look here, this is Schultz Modding's feedlot, and you can just zoom in there, you can see we've got our uh, info tag there on the right, we've got the dump point for feed, and we've got the buy point for the animals down the other end. We place this down as it is, it's got the feedlot and the triggers for the feed troughs and everything like that in it, and then you can build your fences to look however you want. Now my intention had been to basically build, let's say one there, mirror it around, and put one on the other side. And have an aisle down the middle where you can drive down and feed the animals on both sides. So we would have been able to do maybe from here one, two, three along here. So it had six of these all set up and then down the end and around here we were going to have put one of the big slurry pits. So something like one of these liquid manure tanks from 46 mods which works with the slurry mixer which we've been using already as well. So that was the intention. Put that down there with six of the feedlots. Now we'll just spin it back around and have a look again. So the alternative option is to use Lazy E Modding's Midwest style feedlot pack. If we just have a look here, you can see we've got a right pen which has the gate up there in the top. We can use the left pen which has the gate in the sort of other side. And then it also comes with a connector pen. So we could build, for example, we could put that one up the top. We could put the connector in the middle and we could put this one over here. So we've got a few different options how to do that. That would give us uh, 275 times 3. If I was going to do it this way I'd only put 3 of these along because they are quite a lot bigger and that would at even at 3 would give us close to 900 head of cattle, 825 if my maths does me right uh, and that would be $150,000. We go back and have a look at the buildable feedlot. They're only $25,000 each so if we were to put 6 of these in that would be $150,000 as well. So much the same price. We're going to obviously at six potentially have 6,000 head of cattle here, which is uh, completely untenable with the feed requirements we'd have. But for the size of these, I think I might only put maybe 100, 100 head in one of these and uh, that would still give us 600 head. So I'm on the fence. I'm still leaning towards this because this was my initial intention and what I was going to do. So I'm going to give it some quick little thought, come up with a solution, an idea, and uh, we're just going to get in there and get it built. Alright, I've given it some thought and I'm going to go with the uh, Schultz modding one, the buildable feedlot here, and stick to about 100 head, maybe 150 head, it does give us the option to push things up. But we're going to put six of these in, we're going to build them along here, so we've got a centre aisle to run the feed trucks down, or whatever we're going to use for the feeding. I'm actually going to widen the aisle against the... Uh, barns in that just a little bit we're going to go a little bit less uh 
little bit less demanding and less, a little bit less space. But before we do that, you can see that the ground does want to level. It's not quite level through here. So we're going to go through, we're going to level the ground, get it nice and flat. Might mean we need to do a little bit of sloping and contouring to get in and out of places, but I think that will be better than trying to build these all at different levels. So I'm going to crack into a little time lapse here of us getting this built, and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we're all finished. And there we go, I think I am pretty happy with that feedlot. I think we've spent about 350k on it with all the different landscaping and having to redo fences and things like that. Uh, but all in all, I'm pretty pretty stoked with how that's turned out. We gave ourselves plenty of space down here through the middle to be able to get a uh, unit down here, truck and trailer or whatever we're going to be feeding with. And it also means we can go both ways. We could have one going down here, unloading on the left, and one going back the other way, unloading on the left. Or it might be that they go down one side, turn around, and come back the other. So I'm pretty stoked with that, actually. Obviously, you can set up the gates. This one on the back, we've left a lot more open. The one at the front, because it was close to the yard and that, we gave a little bit more protection around the fences. Now, I think if we just come up here, bring up our trigger, we have our left click, and that will hide the grid. So we'll go through and do that on all three, or all six of them in fact come down here and hide the grid and then we'll uh, grab the drone jump up and have a look at it all from above and there we go a 6,000 head feedlot like I said we might push it to 150 per pen so up around the uh, 750 or so but other than that in fact 900 won't it be 150 head over six pens will be six times 15 900 oh, 50 but regardless, I think that is really going to be about the limit of what we want to do here, both with the potential for being able to produce food, because obviously we need to keep these hungry mouths fed, and just for the ongoing management of the farm. But I think that is going to work out pretty, pretty well. I'm looking forward to getting some animals down in here and uh, get it populated. But I think we're going to run out of uh, run them out of food first, 
And my other thought with this, obviously we can't collect milk out of this, and milk has been our lifeblood. So what we might do, we might keep obviously the two Frisian herds that we already have, we might keep those because they are the ones that are producing the milk and getting us a lot of income. Uh, then the other animals, uh, one herd of Angus, which I'm not sure which farm they are in, but we might sell the farm over in that distance, over in that way, uh, the one with the alfalfa field, because obviously there's no value to having the alfalfa for us. Uh, so what we might do, bring the animals from that, bring them over here, and set this up more as a, as a feedlot, and get some Angus in here, and uh, fatten those up, and get them sold at some stage. So lots and lots to do. I'm looking forward to it though. Very excited. Uh, we might look and see if we can find some more decoration to put in here, whether there's some bale feeders, or uh, just some things we can put in there that just make it look a little bit more populated. But other than that, I am pretty happy with how that's all turned out. Well, I think with that all built, that is a fantastic spot to wrap up this episode. I'm looking forward to getting some animals in there and getting this all up and going. Uh, I'm excited to have got that auto drive course working as well, because that gives me a lot more confidence to keep the dairy cows where they are and worry about more bringing in the cattle to this side and uh, working on those here. So lots and lots to look forward to. Next time, I'm hoping I'll be able to get some animals in here and get it populated a little bit and start to work at this end. Uh, but I'm also expecting we might be moving forward another month and we will be cracking into oat harvest and that field is pretty large. Of course, uh, we don't have another combine at the moment. We do still only have the New Holland. That is something else we might have to give some consideration to. And we're also going to bale all of that because we want to get some more straw in here as filler for the feed so we can make our silage, may silage, and hey, go that little bit further. So I hope you have all enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.